Right, so welcome everybody to our webinar tonight. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have all of you here and in a webinar that we've entitled Trends in the Football Industry. Our guest tonight is Julie Ferre Nadal. Julie is a sports marketing consultant. Um, he has been working in the sports football industry for a number of years. And he is the CEO of a company called JFN Sport, which he created um in the areas of sports marketing and sports innovation in that role he is constantly um, um in contact with clubs federations brands etc so he always has his finger on the pulse on what's happening in, in the sports and football industry and that's why we've uh, invited him here tonight he also was the head of global partnerships at fc barcelona and the commercial and marketing director at as monaco so Julie, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here and um, always great to, to learn from you. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to, to be part of SBI Barcelona. And I'm delighted to be, to be here tonight trying to, to uh, talk about what's happening, which is a lot in the, in the sports industry these days. 100%, 100%. Let me just introduce myself for those that uh, may not know who I am. I know we have a, a very engaged community that attends our webinars, but for those that is your first time here, my name is Diego Valdez. I'm the Director General at the Sports Business Institute Barcelona. And what we do is provide education for those that want to move into a career in the business side of football, uh, particularly into a leadership role. So we have a number of programs that we run throughout the year and our flagship course is our master in football business and management which i'll talk about a little bit later on uh, once we get started with the webinar just to give you uh, an idea of how the webinar is structured tonight we will be running for approximately one hour and the way we've structured it is julia's prepared a presentation with some some information and some trends that he's going to share with us but we wanted to we wanted to make this um, interactive. We wanted to provide you an opportunity to ask your questions, to get involved in the conversation. So you'll see that once we get through some of the points that Julie wants to communicate, um, we will open up the floor for discussion and it's going to be an engaging session because again, we've prepared this for you and we don't want to be here, um, you know, speaking for the whole hour, but we want your input. We want your questions and we'll leave that for a little bit later on after the presentation. For those that, um, you know, it's your first time here, um, what we like to do is we like to do a sound check, uh, make sure that the sound is coming through okay. And we do this by asking you to put in the chat box, where are you connecting from? So tell us the city or the country where you're connecting from. And we always like to know that we have uh, people from all over the world coming in and um, listening into these webinars that we prepare specifically for you. So Mo, nice to see you, Mo, from Saudi Arabia. Um, I see that he's put in the chat, Southampton, Qatar, London, France. Excellent, Brazil. So as we can see, uh, Birmingham, Manchester, people from um, different parts of the world tonight and um, really looking forward to that. So Julie, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and put the presentation over to you so that you can switch the slides. Um, but if for any reason um, we can't do that, um, I will switch the slides for you. So let me know if you can switch the slides on your end. Otherwise, you can just tell me, you know, when you want the slide to, to move and uh, and I'll take care of it from my end. So um, are you able to let me try it? Let me, let me try, I'll okay. tell you. Um, there we yeah, go. Looks like I can. Perfect. Okay, so I'll turn it over to you, Julia. Always a pleasure. So the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diego. And it's, it's really cool to see people connecting from all over the world. So it's, uh, I love that. Uh, so a little bit about my experience. I mean, you can, you can look me up in uh, LinkedIn, uh, where we can exchange with no problem. Uh, you know, so I'm not going to bore you with my, my experience, but I mean, as, as Diego was saying, uh, I spent the last years in football, uh, with the clubs of, you know, FC Barcelona as Monaco, but before that, you know, I've been in basketball with FIBA. I've been with FIFA beat soccer. I started with Cirque du Soleil. So, you know, uh, it's been more than 15 years of experience. Uh, but what you realize uh, in today's presentation is that things are now changing so fast and so rapidly that, uh, you know, 
I'm not going to say that the past experience doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't matter because of course it does. But it's true that um, the things are going so fast that to adapt to what's going on today, it really requires an extra effort, you know, and we all start from scratch trying to understand what's going on. So, you know, it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating um, moment in the, in the, in the industry. And that's why, you know, uh, I think we don't have to be shy in words. I think we're living a revolution. Uh, this is, this is what's, what's, um, what's happening today. You know, uh, we will cover many of the points, but I, I, I have an experience in my 15 years of career in, in this industry, something quite like what it's it's happening what is happening um uh today and let me say that today because it's it's so big and i know that that uh, you know mostly everybody today connected to just understand what's happening in digital and we're going to talk about digital but i think that uh diego i mean even sometimes we can even talk about other things you know that are happening uh before our eyes you know i think the race of, uh, of 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 female sports and you know nor, uh, notably football what's been happening over the last year two years is just phenomenal and it's having an impact in the industry i think another topic that will we will hear a lot in the coming years i think is going to be sustainability because it's coming a lot in many parts of our society uh, our companies other companies are paying more and more attention to that so i think sports are a bit you know delayed versus that reality but i think we're going to hear a lot about uh, about sustainability in sports in the coming years you know so that's that's a, let's say a side note for another day uh, but i think it's it's really important uh, to to call this you know a revolution because what's happening uh, it's so fast uh, that uh, it's 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 difficult to 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 keep up and to catch up in the in the in the industry and for this i i, I want to I want to just give an example, you know, uh, with the two euros, uh, Euro 2016. So it was really just the one before the one we experienced this summer. If you look at the sponsors, you know, they were the classics, right? I mean, of course you have uh, Adidas, but you know, you had a beer company, you have a drink company, you have the tires, the car, you know, the telecom, the airline, you know, which is, you know, what it's been going on in terms of sponsorship um over the last years you know nothing new the usual suspects if you look at UEFA Euro 2020 even if it took place this year you already see companies like booking.com like takeaway.com tiktok you know these are purely digital companies that were not there were not on that space investing this level of money uh, before and now they're coming in, you know, even Alipay, you know, it's also a new player, let's say, that is disrupting, you know, the classic sponsorship uh, um, um, companies that you would imagine. So you can see just from one euro to another one, you know, you already have three, four new players, you know, that are extremely relevant. Uh, they pay a lot of money to be part of this and they're here to stay, you know. So that that's just the sense that, uh, you know, the digital revolution is here in terms of in terms of sponsorship. but. It's, it goes, you know, beyond the euro. I mean, you, it's, it's all over, you know, uh, in France, where, 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 where I am, where I'm based, uh, you know, uh, the, the naming, uh, was, was, uh, was assigned by Uber Eats, um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, that's a company that, you know, you would not imagine five years ago doing such a, a bold move, uh, hotels.com is in, uh, is in champions league. That's probably why booking.com is in the euro. Uh, we've seen how uh, Socios uh, has taken over a few front of jerseys, uh, Inter uh, or Valencia. I mean, Inter after 20 years or more with Pirelli, you know, you cannot be more disruptive than that, than replacing your, your, your long lasting sponsor by a company or by a project like Socios, right? To promote your own token. But the, the, it just, I mean, the, the list is endless. You know, we have crypto.com, which is taking the market by storm. Uh, you know, I just put here the example of Serie A just to diversify a bit, but you know that they signed with Paris Saint-Germain, you know, they're signing deals uh, all over, you know, it's happening all the time. Uh, the, the front of Jersey from, from, from Roma, it went from Qatar Airways, you know, classic airline deal to digital bits. And one that for me, it was, you know, like, wow, something serious is happening where you see that a company like Airbnb is a, is a, is Olympic partner, you know, uh, nothing less. So it's really a lot a lot 
a lot going on. And we are in a completely new digital ecosystem, you know, and, and that's why it's really, really important that uh, the, the people that are in the industry or they want to be in the industry understand this ecosystem because it's, it's, becoming, it's becoming complex. Before, you know, uh, and when I say before, I'm not talking 10 years ago, I'm saying about the last years. Uh, what's happened is that, you know, when we talk digital, the digital departments in football clubs, we're talking about social media. Right. I mean, that was, that was something that it, it was extremely important for the industry as well for for the society, of course. But if we focus on football, which is, of course, the point, first, it gave many positive things. OK, first of all, big numbers. I mean, it helped the globalization of the sport. I mean, the first big, uh, big impact for the globalization of, of football and sport were the TV broadcast. Of course, all of a sudden you could watch, you know, football games from any league, you know, from Premier League, La Liga, etc., all over the world. But social media was like, you know, the, the, the fuel, the gasoline, you know, that put like the big spark and the fire and made that, you know, anybody, you know, they didn't even need to, to watch TV to follow your football club, you know. And for many years, that was the focus of the football clubs, you know, how many... Uh, how many number, how many fans we have on Facebook, on Instagram? What are the new platforms coming in? What's relevant in Asia? You know, should be should we be in line because it's you know it's the platform that is relevant in in uh, in Japan, you know, in Asia. So we need to be there. You know, what's happening in in China? Okay, we need to go to Weibo, etc. So social media was uh, was the way to go, uh, and we use it a lot in the sponsorship sales. You know, but I always call it like a popularity ranking. You know, I can say, okay, I'm number one or number two, because that's objective. You know, we all have the, you know, as football club, we're all competing on the same space. So I can compare apples to apples. I can compare, you know, how many fans uh, FC Barcelona has on Facebook versus Real Madrid versus Manchester United and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a popularity ranking and that had a huge impact in the last decade. You know, uh, it, it was the main focus. It, uh, social media started in the communication departments, uh, of course, of the football clubs. But then, you know, it went rapidly to marketing, to commercial, because it was a way to promote your brand. And by promoting your brand, your popularity, then you would end up signing sponsorship deals and sometimes some digital partnerships. So that was the positive of digital platforms. But we, we're all seeing that this was coming to its limit, you know, because basically, there were big minors. First, the monetization. For years, clubs have been talking about how to monetize your fans. You know, you have 100 million uh, fans in Facebook. Fantastic. How do you monetize that? Same in Instagram, Twitter, etc. The reality is that the ones monetizing are the platforms, not the clubs. So that was a big problem. The engagement also it's relatively low because all the algorithms algorithms and the way the social media work it's becoming more complex you have 100 million fans on facebook or 50 or whatever or five how many of them will they actually see your content it's a small percentage the engagement becomes small yeah you can like it you know you can like a content uh, you can post a comment but your comment goes really nowhere you know what's the impact of your comment it's not in the football world Nothing, nothing really happens and actually it becomes actually very negative trends because of the of the of the comments so you know many people don't even bother and a very important factor is that the clubs didn't have any data you have millions you don't know how to talk to them you know you don't know how to monetize because you don't have really you don't know them who is behind these usernames etc literally you don't know so this model of social media which boosted uh, the market in an amazing way uh, in the last decade was clearly coming to um, its its limit and, 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 and there have been many, many uh, attempts to try to change this ecosystem. So this ecosystem now, it's extremely complex. <laughs> and, and here, I mean, I, we didn't even put all the logos or because, I mean, uh, we couldn't even read it if we put all the logos in there, you know. But this is basically... Uh, the ecosystem uh, that is 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 absolutely uh, creating this revolution in the industry. And to give you an idea, you know, um, I was commercial director of a football club until spring last year. OK, so I'm not talking that long ago. It was still last year. OK, 15, 16 months ago. We didn't talk about any of this. 
yes, we talk a bit about socios because they were already there. You know, there were some initiatives, but were more digital partnerships, low level, you know, of course, where the FIFA deals, Konami's, et cetera, you know, some attempts on the esports side, but it was just initiatives like this. Here in this ecosystem, I mean, we didn't even imagine this was coming. Honestly, I think that if we look back at the end of 2020, I don't think I would be presenting a slide like this, you know, and, and, and that shows how fast it goes. How, what happened in the last six months, which makes you wonder what's going to happen in the coming six months, right? Because, I mean, here you have different things. So, I mean, new platforms, when I say new, I mean, of course, they've been around for a long time, but football clubs, uh, they've been embracing uh, a platform like Twitch in the last years, trying to capture this audience, you know, this, this fun uh, profile that is extremely hard for football or for any uh, you know, company or any any entity or any entertainment business. You know, it's it's very hard for them to get to this young target profile. So they're going to Twitch. But then came you know fan tokens, uh, which socios to give them credit, they were pioneering. You know, I remember when they signed at first with Juventus and and and, and Paris Saint Germain back in the day. I was at FC Barcelona. We were all watching like, okay, what's what's going on? What is this? Right? What's coming? But it was like, a, you know, an innovative attempt. Let's see what happens, etc. So socios, it's been extremely active on the on the last uh, the last months, extremely active, signing deals in the US, in Europe, multi sport uh, and moving or pivoting more into the fan engagement part, you know, not only talking about fan tokens or fan tokens is the way to engage with your fan. And then came the, also the eruption of Bitsy from Turkey, you know, Bitsy doing agreements, you know, with MotoGP, with the Spanish national team, you see them in front of jerseys, etc. So these two companies are making deals uh, right and left. But then come, I mean, that's you know another subject on itself. They come the NFT. You know, uh, again, I think in January nobody really was talking about NFT. But the last six, seven months, uh, six months is just crazy. You know, and that's a world by itself because there's not an NFT solution. You know. Uh, for 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 a club, you know, or for a player, or for a competition, you know, there's many many elements happening uh, on the on the NFT side, which actually, you know, it's a way to monetize. But the the company, the clubs are actually wondering, okay, NFT is big, but how do I do it? What do I do? With whom do I do it? Because of course, you know, there's plenty of startups offering that. Uh, there's the big players now that are taking big positions and very strong positions. I just mentioned, you know, a couple here like Terraria or Dapper Labs, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's more complex than that because basically an NFT, I guess you, you all know by now, but it's a non-fungible token. It's basically something, you know, it's, it's a collector items item that is, is, is digital and it's enabled by the technology of blockchain, right? Which enables me as a property to sell something that actually is unique and I can just transfer to one person another and keep track of who has the original, you know, like it happens with a physical, with a physical uh, uh, asset. Uh, and actually, you know, to make it even more complex, there are the physical, as they call it, which is both physical and digital, you know, but basically the NFTs, you could actually create your own NFT and what you end that you need at the end is just a marketplace. And many companies are offering a marketplace for your NFT. So when we say, okay, yeah, let's do an NFT, it's like, okay, but behind doing an NFT, there are many ways uh, to do it. Uh, and that's something that uh, many football clubs or many properties are struggling to understand or are taking their time to actually make a move because there are many options in the market. You can marry, let's say, a big player like the one you see here, or you can you create your own NFT, but you know, then you have to go to other platforms. The problem, or let's say the benefit that the big players give you is that you have the community behind. In a marketplace, like it happens, like it happens in Amazon. Let's imagine Amazon, you know, what is amazing about selling in Amazon is that you have a community of buyers already there. So just by posting it, you know that it's gonna, it's, it can be very successful. With NFTs, it'd be the same thing. You know, you can go to these players, but you can go and, you know, uh, fly solo, do it yourself, and then you position it in different 
in different marketplaces. So there are many ways to play on the NFT side. You have digital bits, which we've seen with, with Roma, you know, which they have, you know, it's actually, um, they provide their blockchain technology, you know, so it's more the framework for them to develop NFTs. Uh, and then linked to that, there's the eruption of crypto companies. You know, as we said before, we have crypto.com, we have Binance coming in, uh, FTX, you know, signing naming rights deals, huge deals in the US. You know, this is crazy. You know, this is an eruption which is comparable to the betting companies 10 years ago. And actually, they say it themselves because the target uh, for crypto company, for a betting company, is very similar in terms of, uh, of, uh, of demographic. And that's why sports and especially football, it's very interesting for them, you know, because it's male um, age, not that young, actually, even if we, we know that it's starting very young, but it can go up to 35 you know, uh, 20, 18 to 35 male. So uh, sports is, is ideal for them. And the eruption of crypto is absolutely linked to NFTs too, because, you know, as we know crypto operate in the blockchain uh, um, environment, which, you know, gives them the platform to be also a marketplace for NFTs. So all the deals that you are seeing now of crypto.com and, and Binance is coming in, etc will be linked to NFT because there's a natural step for them to provide this service. But then if we continue in this, cir in this circle, I mean, there's the data part. I mean, I said before that one of the problems that, uh, that the social media were providing to the football clubs, you know, and not only, but if we focus about the football clubs, is that there's no data. The CRM uh, of football clubs have been extremely poor for years, even the big ones you know, because there were not ways to actually grab this data. Uh, there are companies that are doing that, they are specialized on that. And actually, you know, the things that we're seeing before, all what we've seen before, help also to gather those, those data, you know, and this is gold for a football club to know who is your fan, where do they live, what's the demographic, what do they like, you know, because first it will help to sell the products of the of the of the club naturally you know for e-commerce for ticketing uh, for anything and then it will help to sell sponsorship because i can go to a car company and say actually i know for a fact based on my data that your your client your potential client you know uh, can be amongst my fans because i have data that support that you know and that's something that brands uh, require more and more but the football clubs have been extremely poor delivering that. So data is an important part of the equation. And at the end, and we cannot ignore in this whole ecosystem, the gaming part, you know, the, all the e-sport, um, what, what are the football clubs doing in the e-sport? Uh, you know, how can in, interact uh, the other elements that we've seen in this, in this ecosystem? You know, I mean, over the last years, yes. I mean, there were deals with FIFA or with Konami. That's what was happening. But we've seen many initiatives, some more aggressive than others, you know, because some clubs just decide to have a FIFA team or, or, a, or a football pro team, but some are really getting into League of Legends and combat games, etc., in order to, 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 to uh, target these audiences that are so difficult to, 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 to grasp. So all of this, you know, has become now the day-to-day -day of a commercial department of a football club. So, I mean, there's so many other players in each section of this, uh, of this uh, circle, <clears throat> especially on the NFT side or the crypto side and even data that, you know, it has the complexity. I would say the complexity of a commercial role or commercial department over the last year and a half has been, uh, you know, the, the, com the complexity has really increased and a part of besides the classic sponsorship, which is always there, but you know, I don't, I don't see any particular evolution on that side. This is where the money is, and this is what's really compensating for the lack of, of the loss of revenue uh, because of COVID. You know, uh, COVID has had a, an amazing impact, uh, sadly, for society and but for football clubs. Uh, and these deals are actually making up for everything that's been lost. And there's no question that COVID is also has also been an accelerator of everything that we see here. No question, because all of a sudden, digital evolution, which will have taken place maybe in two, three, four years, yeah, it's been happening in six months, one year max, you know? So this is the, the new ecosystem that, that we, we need 
to deal with in the in the in the industry and where I'm paying a lot of attention because this is where you know the industry is going and what will be extremely extremely relevant for the for the future. And you know, just a quick case study, you know, um, one 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 institution that I always like to pay attention to is, is La Liga. So if you see La Liga, because you may think, okay, but can you have uh, two NFTs? Can you be with funding fund tokens? And then yes, absolutely you can, because it's like anything on sponsorship. It's about cutting the cake. You know, uh, I always put that example: one cake. You know, if you sell just one cake uh, in a, in a bakery, it has one price. If the same, exactly the same cake, you sell it by pieces. You know, all the pieces together will add up. You know, to more money than if you just sell the cake. Sponsorship is always like this. You know, like for drinks, you can have alcoholic drinks, you can have soft drinks, you can have a water, you can have a sportive drinks, you know, you can cut one category in, in, in multiple. And this is exactly the same. So La Liga, what do they do? La Liga, they have um, uh, Sorare, you know, the, the French company, which they raised uh, an amazing amount of money, more than 600 million, 600 million uh, two weeks ago, it was announced, you know, where Gerard Piquet is actually a part of it. Uh, and then they, they have... You know, uh, Sorari is a fantasy game where actually you collect the, the cards for the players, you know, to put in your team. So basically, the Liga, La Liga with Sorari, they have the, the NFTs with the, ca the cards of the player. With Dapper Labs, they have a completely different type of NFT. They have the highlights. They have specific moments, you know, which is what Dapper Labs, they've been doing with the NBA, which was an amazing uh, success, an amazing boom uh, before summer. Right, so you here you have two different NFTs, and why not? You could have multiple others, you know, as long as you have the content and you have the rights to commercialize it, you know, uh, you can you can uh, you can have more than those NFTs. And then socials is part of it because it's different, it's fun token, you know, it's their official fan engagement partner, completely different from NFTs. You know, it could be that at some point they will offer NFTs. But as long as in your contracts you you you, you cut it uh, in the right way, you know, uh, then you 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 will, you can you can you have multiple multiple um, uh, players uh, in your sponsorship portfolio, you know, and and they could even have a crypto company, you know. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's a smart way to do it to see. Okay, let's try to understand the space. Here it's less set on stone because it's moving every every week. I would say. But it's very important that, uh, you know, any football club that they want to do deals, they don't give away uh, too much. They try to concentrate uh, on a specific area, opening or having always the door open uh, for, for, for exploitation of other assets, digital or non-digital with other, with other companies. So La Liga, I think it's a very, very interesting way to understand how this is working and, you know, uh, let's be Let's be uh, looking at what will be coming with La Liga in the coming weeks or months, because I'm sure we'll see more more movement in that in that space. So before we we move to the to the Q and A, and I think I'm I'm doing okay on on, on timing, Diego. Uh, some some uh, some uh, takeaways uh, for you, right? So as I said, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself. Uh, this is a revolution because it's going so fast that you know what you read today. Uh, might be uh, outdated in two weeks. Okay, so really, really uh, look at it like this. Um, these are revenue generators beyond sponsorship. Okay, uh, sponsorship deal where, you know, this is the fee the company pays uh, in exchange of rights. This is a formula I think we need, we need to leave a little bit behind. Uh, of course, it will still happen. But again, I think COVID, COVID has changed all the all the frameworks, all the way of working, you know, in the past, because the companies are requesting different ways of, you know, uh, corporations, you know, and if it's a partnership, it's a partnership, you know, uh, it's a partnership from both sides. It cannot be a partnership where you just put the money and, and, and that's it, you know, and you take all the risk. So I think that sponsorship will always be there, uh, you know, but I think that uh, before in a football club, we'll be like, no, we want to, you know, have a fixed fee. And this is it, and this is your 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 rights, and, and that's it. Uh, what what these companies are showing is that it's more complex than that because you can do a deal uh, with the fan token uh, with socials or Bitsy where there is a sponsorship fee certainly for some some rights, but you need to assess how much money 
you can generate on top of that because that's real money and it's coming strong you know uh, i saw uh, when bitsy um, uh, did the 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 sale of the fan token of the brazilian national team of course big deal you know i think they 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 came up with uh, 15 million uh, euros in, or dollars in, in in just a few hours you know this is real money these are people that are putting money in order to have a fan token from 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 the brazilian national team okay so the revenue generation you know with a crypto company you would sign a deal with a crypto company for sponsorship but if you link to nfts there's an upside here you know so all of this needs to be really taken into consideration now again adding more complexity but adding an amazing potential you know in a moment where you know it was all crisis management how do we deal with the with the loss of revenues etc this is really fresh air you know this is like okay we are not only signing new sponsorship deals but actually through these formulas we can make more money uh, than with the deal itself so this is something that you know sponsorship it's completely getting uh, upside down because uh, you cannot ignore anymore the upside that uh, that these deals can can provide you and then uh, i think that there's two things here that are important no one is that the potential is unlimited because nobody knows nobody knows where where what's where where is the limit of this you know um it's it's there is a boom uh, on investment on crypto on on nfts uh and and the money that uh, clubs big or small but especially the big ones could do if they do a good job in a good strategy on this i think it's uh it's uh it's uh, it's quite important you know and and so i think that uh what would become next, and I know for a fact that you know this, it will be coming, is that um, not only you can have a fan token because a fan token, I mean, it's it's a good way for a club to do it. You take Socius or Bitsy, they have all the technology, they do everything, they do it for you, they sell your fan token, and at the end, for the fan, it's quite limited what you can do because you will select, you know, the music of the theme when they cut into the stadium. You know, and 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 these kind of details. You know, so so I think there's there's quite of unknown on that also. But what it's coming for a fact is why not? You know, having actually your token uh, as an ownership of the club. You know, a real token from the club, you know, not a fan token, but a club token, where actually by buying, you know, you can uh, own like a share, but it's a token, but it's actual ownership. You know, where clubs can give away. 10%, 20% of their ownership via tokens, you know, uh, that's the technology is absolutely possible to do that. That's not an issue. Uh, it's, it's, I think we'll see movements on that, on that direction. And it's also actually a, a way to, to raise capital for the clubs without giving away all the, all the ownership, of course, but a small part of it, I'm sure that we'll see movements on that. Uh, and the, the, of course, the other side of the coin is that it, there's a lot of unknown, you know. Uh, now it's booming. Now many things are happening. Some crazy prices uh, for 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 NFTs we've seen around. Um, amazing, uh, as I said, you know, uh, when there's a fan token um, issue, you know, amazing numbers again. Will this last? You know, is this a bubble, or is this something that it's here to stay? Honestly, I don't have a crystal ball, so I cannot answer that. I wish, uh, but 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 it's 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 impossible to know. Everybody is asking that, you know. I think my personal opinion is that this is here to stay. Then is it going to be exactly that way? Are we going to see the same companies in two years? Uh, I think probably not. You know, simply because it's it goes so fast. You know, and so many things are happening. I think that's part of a bubble. Uh, in a way, you know, uh, I don't say that in a negative. I say that there, there's a lot of things happening, and probably, you know, the market will stabilize at some point, you know. But that is, is here to stay. Blockchain is here to stay. Cryptos will be growing. You know, NFTs will be part of this ecosystem. The clubs will be looking for new revenues, and they will be looking for ways to engage with fans. That will not change. So I think this is here to stay, but there's some unknown, and you always need to be careful. Uh, because sometimes you're signing partnerships with companies that are two years old, one year old, that they're booming now because it's a startup, 
you know, and uh, it's it's in the long run where where you have to see where this is going. So you know, I always like to be cautious on that. Uh, it's not all uh, fireworks. There's a lot of fireworks, but behind the fireworks, you know, you you need to see what what's what's behind. But and, and that's the last takeaway, uh, and and I think it's probably the most relevant. Uh, if you if you are looking into you know your your career uh, in sports is that this gives an amazing opportunity for young people or for people that understand these topics. You know, when I started in this industry, it was all about seniority, you know, being good at sales, talking to the people, etc. But of course, you know, the more experience, the more seniority, easier it was to get to you know the senior people of the of, of the sponsors. That they make the decisions, you know, it was an old fashioned way to do things it was more difficult to, to, to get through, right? Because it was a matter of years to build that. Now, I would say it's the other way around. The companies, the clubs are struggling to understand that ecosystem. You know, they're really struggling. They struggle with esports and gaming and they struggle with some digital uh, solutions. Now with NFTs, uh, crypto, data. Uh, you know, all of these, you know, fan tokens, anybody, you know, that is young, that understands this, it's super valuable, you know. Uh, any football club would want to have people that understand that. Any agency, sports agency, they've been higher people, young people that understand esports because nobody like younger people will understand esports. The same will be happening with this, or it's already happening, you know. We need in the industry people that understand that. And it's more likely to be young people that are sharp and understand how the digital world works rather than, you know, people that we've been around for 20 years. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's difficult to to cap, catch up with everything that is happening. So that's an amazing and huge opportunity in the job market uh, for the new roles that will be appearing. And that's it from my side. Diego, I pass it over to you if there's a Q&A planned. Thank you very much, Julie. Really interesting. Um, uh, we will get to the questions in just a moment. I see that there's a couple already from Ed, so uh, we'll we'll get to your questions in just a moment. It is fascinating to hear um, your um, insight because if we take a company like uh, Socios that you were talking about before, and I think it's interesting what you mentioned that it has accelerated the market um, because of the pandemic. And uh, I'm sure that if you had gone in um, trying to sell or pitch <clears throat> the services of socios before the pandemic, probably clubs being in a more comfortable situation would have had time, would have had, been able to reflect upon this, and and perhaps it wouldn't have grown as much. But with the pandemic, uh, obviously a need for revenues to to come in, um, obviously it would, would would make it more um, you know appealing and uh, and would accelerate this process. And and there's the proof. Uh, with a company like Socios, no? So very, very interesting to hear about that. And of course, all the other areas that you touched upon. Um, great. Well, we'll get to your questions in just a moment. Let me just tell you a little bit about um, our master's program before we move on to the, to the chat, because um, I think it's interesting for those that want to move into this space, that want to move into the football industry. As Julie said, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity in these areas if uh, you understand them, if you prepare. And there's a very good example of a student that did our master last year, and I think he's connected tonight, in fact. His name is Hamza. Um, and he specialized in um, particularly these areas. And now he's uh, working in the football industry for a company called Double Pass. So there are opportunities out there in the market. Um, it's just how you can uh, find a way to, to position yourself and to enter into you know, this industry. So we are uh, about to start our master in football business and management, which starts on October 18th. Julie plays an important role because he's a career mentor. He also delivers master classes. So um, I won't take too much of your time tonight because that's not uh, the objective of this webinar. But I did want to mention that we have a fantastic lineup of guest speakers, Julie included, uh, people that have worked for FIFA, for clubs like Manchester United, FC Barcelona, um, Steve Antropos there at the bottom, who was at uh, Manchester City now with Socios. So, um, you know, people like him coming on, Ornella, Desiree from FIFA. So this goes on and on. People from the football industry that are going to deliver the sessions for that master program. Um, the other thing that you should um, know about uh, what we do at SBI is the networking, the community that we build. 
And one of the things that our programs, um, you know, differ from some of the others in the marketplace, we attract a lot of people from the industry already, and particularly a number of football players at the elite level. So in many cases, when you do the master's program, you can end up being with a Premier League player. Here you see Wes Morgan of Leicester City, Matt Ritchie of Newcastle United. If you see there the, the picture, the third from the bottom, that's Troy Deeney from uh, Watford FC. So, you know, these people that um, have um, quite a reputable, um, you know, um, image, I guess you could say, from, from being in, in the football industry. So you could be in a cohort where you're with several professional football players, club executives, and then some young people that are that are hungry, that want to learn about the, the business side of football, that consume sport differently, and as a result, add value to those more experienced in the cohort. So it's a really interesting, nice dynamic. Um, one of the things that we also offer is mentorship. Julie is one of the mentors. So what we do is with all the master students is we, you know, take uh, where you're at today, we understand where you want to go, and we do what is called a gap analysis exercise. So we find out what gaps you need to fill. And with our team of mentors, we work together for you to have an action plan um, to move into, um, you know, a position in the industry. That said, there's more information on our website. Go check it out if that's something that you're interested in. It starts October 18th, and um, we're uh, in the last days of um, recruiting uh, the last few spots that remain for the master's program. Um, okay, well, let's let's move on to the Q&A, Julie, because I'm thinking that there's quite a bit of uh, interest in what you shared with us tonight. So, um, I see that there's a question from Ed. So, Ed, I'm going to try and bring you in with a mic <clears throat> because I think it'll be more engaging if you if you uh, present your question to us with audio. So, Ed, just bear with me for a second while I try to unmute you and we'll have you ask your question. So, Ed, <clears throat> I think you're in South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, Ed. So, let us know if you can hear us and if your audio is <laughs> unmuted. There we go, Ed. Hi. Hi, how are you guys? Thank you very much for a fantastic presentation, Julie. I really, really found it very, very interesting. Um, I actually work in a completely different area uh, around tokenization for agriculture, which is my background. And I'm obviously a sports fan, like I, I assume everybody here. And as a sports fan, um, I'm quite keen on the idea that some of these things could be fan base led and I'm very interested to know what you think about that and whether you've had any insights to maybe any sort of change in the direction of the flow from maybe going from the, the actual club to the fans for the fans consuming some of this content and or creating some of the content that could also be sold back into their own fan base I was just wondering had you seen any anything like that happening yet because obviously the technology is agnostic it's open open to everybody to use um but to be quite honest it's it's not rocket science to create a fan base token these days it's you could do it in an afternoon so i was just wondering if, if you've actually seen anything like that happening already perfect thank you ed Thank you, Ed, for the for the question and, and 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 for the kind words. So I think I mean I haven't seen it. Uh, I, I I absolutely would not dare to say that something will not happen, uh, especially in this ecosystem. I think that uh, we haven't seen it all, and we're going to see many things. Uh, I think I think though that the as I said before, I think the, the before anything like that happens, I think it will still be led by the clubs. OK, um, because there is um, a clear way for a football club to um, engage with the fan base, which normally uh, most of it will be around the world if it's a big club. Uh, and that, again, is, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, is an absolute reality for any football club that, you know, you might have uh, 100,000 if you're lucky in your stadium, 50,000. Uh, you know, a, a local city where you engage with people, uh, you know, physically, but you will have millions all over the world, right? That That's not going to change. That's the basis, actually, of everything that is happening, you know? So, um, to your point, um, I think I think that we might see 
at some point because you're right the technology you know now it's there the technology is there so that's that's not the issue uh, i think it's more about who is driving uh, you know this in the industry uh, and at the end it could be that it ends up with what you say you know an actual initiative from fans but i think before that we're going to see clubs that actually you know engage with fans directly uh, proposing a token from the club because then this step, I think it's natural because if you're a fan and your club is 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 um, is making a, a token offering, but actually a real token offering about the club and about the ownership, you're going to be interested. You're going to be interested for sure. Uh, and I think that it's part of even if we're seeing a lot of this, I think and, and that was a crypto company telling me uh, that the actual percentage of people of population in the world doing that it's still small, okay, it's still small. It's, 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 it's a lot of buzz and a lot of people doing it and we hear a lot about it, but the actual people doing it, it's a small percentage of the population. So they see, that's the good news for them, is that the, the potential is just amazing. It's just huge, you know, because if, if you go from small percentage, which actually are already generating a lot of money to, you know, double digit growth i mean this this is going to be a boom so i think i think we might end up seeing this i'm just wondering if it comes from the fans what will be the interest you know from the fund uh, i think that's why i think it, it first needs to come from the club because that will certainly generate interest and when this happens i think we're going to see a domino effect because at the end of the day what socios and bitsy are, are offering it's an easy solution for the club they're doing all the job, they're paying sponsorship money up front, there is, you know, a percentage on top, but what the fund gets, it's very little in terms of value. That's a fact, you know, it's, it's fun, it's good, okay, but it's not, it's not real ownership, it's not really a, a token from the club. So I think we're going to see first the club doing directly, you know, because as you say, the technology is there, uh, token offering. And, you know, once we have fulfilled that space, because we, 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 know, we, we know it's not going to stay put, right? So I think that after this stage, we're going to see new things happening where probably we're going to see some fund-led uh, initiatives. That's my, my take. Very interesting. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for your question. So uh, from London, we're going to move over to South Africa now with Dario. So Dario... Let's try and see if we can get your sound. Uh, so thank you again, Ed, for the question. Uh, so let's go over to Dario. Dario, let's try and get you to unmute your microphone and see if you can come on. So let's give that a shot. My microphone doesn't seem to be working, says Dario. Okay, let's try one more time, Dario. No. Doesn't seem to be working. Okay, well, I'll read Dario's question. I always think it's nice to, to have people come in and contextualize their questions. But uh, Dario's question is, what is the average length of the deals that the NFTs and token companies are signing with these organizations? So it's a good good question, Julie. So is it long-term deals? Is it year-long? What are you seeing? Well, what I'm seeing, uh, because it's not everything public, but I'm seeing standard deals of three, four years. I'm not saying particularly, you know, long deals, uh, to be honest. Uh, I know I know that in some cases, um, some deals uh, like on the front jersey, that's just from the first year. Uh, and then those deals uh, will be moving to away from the jersey because they see the jersey as a promotion of the fan token. Uh, but then they will be, you know, moving just as an official fan token or official fan engagement. Uh, but these, those are two, three years deals. There's no, there's no more, there's no more than that. And and that's, and that's, you know, I'm talking fan token now. Eh? Um, that's what, you know, when I say it's unknown, is that what happens if soci when socios, uh, you know, relationship with Atletico de Madrid or FC Barcelona ends? what's happening with my fan token you know uh it's it's i think that some some uh, which is normal eh? but some are, are not you know on, on solid foundation on, 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 or set on stone you know um i think that that um, um these deals are normal length um 
and that's and that's the that's the way that's the way it runs. I mean, what you have to bear in mind is is once uh, and now I'm moving to the NFT. Once you generated your NFT, your NFT is there forever. You know, it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not something that just vanishes. Uh, so um, I think that what we're going to see with NFTs because it's already there, but now it's normal that there are so many platforms that you know the big the big entities prefer to partner with big companies, you know, like Dapper Labs or, or, or Sorare now. But at the end of the day, an NFT is, again, something that you can sell. I take, again, the example of Amazon, you know, my, now you might say, okay, I'm going to sell it through Amazon because they have the community and I want to sell and, and they guarantee me success. Tomorrow, you know, maybe I create my own e-commerce platform and I sell it in my platform because, you know, it's, uh, it's strong enough now. Right, so I think that we're gonna see a lot of evolution, uh, but I think the difference here of fun tokens and NFTs is that NFT it's actually something that cannot vanish. You know, it's it's like you own something, even if digitally you own it. Uh, uh, while fun token, it it might be more it might be different. You know, that's why I think again I come to my point where if would be if if it would be real ownership, that's a value that you know you can keep forever. You know, you can sell if you want. That's really an asset. A fan token, it's a bit, it's a bit less uh, solid, you know, uh, because I mean, if you use Socios, you need to buy their crypto, which is Chili's, in order to get the fan tokens of the club. So it's, you know, it, it's, uh, and then there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing it. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, the deals are not long because they cannot be long. They can, they, they, they are sponsorship deals, um, lengthwise and the clubs, if they are smart enough, they don't want to marry, you know, for too long, uh, especially in this changing ecosystem, you know, uh, in, in normal sponsorship, even in normal sponsorship, it happens that you are in a five, six year deal. When you sign it, you think it's great. And three years down the road, you think, wow, I'm stuck with this contract. That happens with any sponsor, it could happen with any sponsorship. I think in digital, even more, you don't want to be stuck five, six years because in two years, who knows what's going to be the next big thing, right? Thank you, Dario. Um, very interesting question. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, another another great point. By the way, Julie, some really good feedback from Alfredo, from Hamza, who's here, and he mentioned that he did, in fact, that's right, he did his final project on fan tokenization with us last year. So lots of positive vibes and lots of uh, good... Um, feedback from your presentation tonight um right is there any more questions we have uh, about uh, four or five minutes left and perhaps for one last question if it's coming through the chat so take advantage this is your opportunity to ask julie is there anything regarding um the presentation or, or anything further that you'd like to discuss um and um, i'll wait a couple minutes in the meantime uh, julie um if we take a company like socius for example what, what do you see as their strategy? Is it different, say, for example, the type of partnership that they would sign with a club like Valencia than what they do with Inter? Uh, what's the difference in the business model uh, as far as the, the partnerships that they're signing? Well, I think, I, I, don't, I don't think there will be much difference, to be honest, um, Diego. And, uh, you know, they've been signing also franchises in the US. And, and basically what I think is interesting is that uh, from fan token, as I said before, they're moving into fan engagement. So actually they want, in terms of rights, of course they want visibility because that's promotion for the fan token. If the fan token does well, the club will do well, but socials will do well, of course. But they're getting more and more rights in terms of um, activities for the fans. So uh, I saw before summer uh, an activation of socials uh, bringing people to play in Camp Nou. Uh, in the stadium, uh, you, know, you know, it's the type of thing that uh, I think it's uh, that I think is a great move because otherwise, I mean, I've been criticized also because fan token would be like a kind of a, a speculation also, you know, um, asset. Uh, some some fan clubs were actually not very happy with that, especially in England. Uh, but I think that a good way to put that and, and to show it's for the fans also because it's also for the speculators. It's not, that's not, uh, 
let's not hide it it's normal it's, it's the market uh, but that for the fan they do this type of activities where you actually own a fan token and you care about the club you will not only vote for certain things that are uh, that are relevant for you as a fan you know some things you know as i said just details but the music when the players come in or you know the the color of the third jersey or the training or whatever but i think this fan engagement is where where i see that they have been moving uh, or pivoting to in the last months when they sign a new deal you know they talk about fan engagement they talk about fan activities so they talk a lot about fun 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 and and and, and that's what people expect, and I think what COVID has put on the table, there's, there's, there cannot be any other way that fun has to be at the center of it. I think that if the if the deals start to ignore the fans, you know, and 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 you know, they, it will be a mistake. It needs to be like what can a fan get, even if they are, you know, uh, in the other side of the wall. Digital is the perfect way for that. So let's use it, but let's use it in the in the proper way. Of course, it's a business, uh, and that's something that the fan needs to understand, but always they need to be a thought on you know what's in it for the fan how can the fan benefit from it you know and and that's a very important balance to to keep excellent thank you julie um very insightful very interesting as always so with that we will wrap it up for tonight um once again thank you for connecting it's a great pleasure to have people from all over the world uh, one last thing that I'll say from my side is it is important to remain up to date, to remain relevant, to remain competitive, because as Julie mentioned, this is moving fast. And especially after COVID, the industry is um, evolving. There's many disruptions happening. And if you are interested, and this is taking it from my angle as somebody that deals with a lot of people that want to move into positions in the football industry or want to further their career in the football industry. Um, that's one area that you really need to, to consider. So if you want to learn more about, um, you know, what we do and you want to discuss your career aspirations, if you're looking to move into the football industry, get in touch with us. Emma, our coordinator, uh, would be delighted to set up an appointment, talk to you and learn more about what your aspirations may be um, and whether it is um, something that you're considering for the future or maybe now. Um, get in touch with us because we always like to find out who you are, what your, what your goals, what your aspirations are, and if perhaps there's a way where we can help you. Julie, uh, thank you for tonight. Uh, I know you're, uh, you're, you've got a busy and tight agenda, so thank you for fitting us in. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the Master in, uh, in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, really. Fantastic. No, thank you, Diego. Really, it's really a pleasure. Uh, it's been amazing to see people from from all over the world really and uh, you know i'm looking forward to to starting the the masters excellent excellent julie always a pleasure uh we'll be in touch and to all of you connecting tonight thank you once again we'll see you next time all the best and have a good day evening or night wherever you're connecting from bye for now thank you.